Components are described using XML. However, their structure comes from a meta model described using XSD. This meta model is used by JAXB to create Java classes for all of the component metadata and for serialization and deserialization of the bundle XML. XSL is used to co-generate per bundle ant scripts, XSD files, Java classes, HTML component level documentation, and JDO files for persistence. Properties follow an ECOR-like model, and as you can see, are fairly rich in dimension. The shallow field set is used to specify the minimal set of properties required by the mobile device client, with deep referring to the remaining properties used for configuration. So we have field sets for manipulation and configuration. Events can be pushed one of two ways, either by direct socket, extremely fast, often within just uh, hundreds of milliseconds, or by using your mobile device provider's cloud mechanism, which in the case of Android is Google Cloud Messaging. Note that all the shared logic required for mobile devices, excepting the push mechanism, has been moved down into a connected device layer, which is in the core APIs. And I use the term real-time aware of its meaning with real-time operating systems. However, given my socket push is under 500 milliseconds, often it's 100 or 200, and Google's cloud push is half a second to 20 seconds to never, and email is tens of seconds to minutes, I'm comfortable with the term. Event delivery can be scoped site-wide to the occupants of the building or directly to a user, whether it's yourself or somebody else. Event reporting is coalesced and batched on the server in addition to the client. This helps keep the reporting compact and relevant. All events having unique event data, such as network camera events, are exempt from this mechanism. This means multiple building alarming events received in succession will compact as building alarming five times from start date to end date, rather end times. Data included with an event may be simple or complex and reference a MASH URI. This allows, say, the client to reference the user associated with the mobile device that is publishing an event. Events can have an associated location or not, as all map and perimeter events do. Map events such as those for users, rather their mobile devices, crime, other points of interest, have an associated latitude and longitude. Perimeter or building events have a, a path specifying the building floor room level. This location, whether map or perimeter, is used by autopilot in the go-to functionality. Service events, with the exception of crime reporting, typically don't have an associated location. Events can be filtered both on the server and the mobile device itself. On the server, this is currently done when running the application designer and using the logging service to define event loggers servicing a particular component event. On the mobile device, event filtering is done using a simple hierarchical checklist. Prompted responses are for events which beg a response of the yes-no variety. An example I'd give is a, a hot summer night, you're going to bed and you arm your home. Since your master bedroom window is open, an event is sent back to your mobile device stating, or speaking rather, cannot arm perimeter is following doors or windows are open, master bedroom window. The logical next question is, would you like to bypass an arm anyways? So this event response, or simple question rather, can be presented to the user uh, via voice or a UI dialogue. And of course, in high event environments, this kind of mechanism won't scale and we would probably need to create separate event list widgets, each filtered based on various characteristics. The state of a component determines whether an action is enabled or disabled. Uh, action type is interesting. I use local and remote to differentiate, but perhaps this isn't the best term. Uh, thin or thick action response perhaps is better. So remote actions are when the user, say, wishes to turn an appliance on or off. There's no synchronous response back to the user. Rather, an event is asynchronously delivered back, indicating success. However, with local actions, say you're issuing view to a network camera, the activity occurs on the client. In the case of Android, the returned action response is used to launch the appropriate activity, dynamically based on MIME type. MASH provides several of these 
for MPEG-4, Motion JPEG, and JPEG viewing and streaming. In most cases, the MASH provided activities must be used as they actually work over password protected HTTPS links. Lastly, property and component rules are used to enforce correctness. Simple UEL expressions at either level allow you to enforce your configuration.